seems like I'm always being told to take my feet off the furniture, put a coaster under my beer, turn the TV down. I used to make the rules, and now I have to follow them. I don't know what's bugging me. I guess it's not easy for a guy like me to not be in charge. And that's from Frasier. That's the dad who's now living with Frasier and has to live by Frasier's rules to some extent. And he's reflecting back and saying, you know, I used to make the rules for Frasier, and now Frasier is making the rules for me. And it's a tough situation because there's not a one of us that doesn't love our own autonomy, the ability to take charge of our life and make independent decisions. Ah, You know, let me soften that a little bit. There are some people who have made it into a habit to constantly be chronically clingy and dependent on other people. But in terms of building character and building pride, you can't build it by always living in the shadows of others. And if somebody's always picking on you for, you know, put a coaster under your bear, turn the TV down, take your feet off of the couch, if they're constantly picking on you, you just feel so diminished. You don't feel valued or visible. And so what you need to do in those situations is speak from your heart. Instead of engaging in a power struggle and trying to fight back or going underground and carrying that bitterness inside but being a cold, looking like a cold person that no one can reach, you know, just speak from your heart and just say that, in, or from your head, and just say that, you know, it's, I I feel belittled when I'm told these things. Let's let's come up with some solution to this so this isn't a chronic tension between us because I want to feel at home here and I know it's your home and I want to thank you for being gracious enough to let me in. Let's figure out a system that works for both of us. And it opens up a discussion. And maybe maybe Frasier will be more comfortable with uh, the TV being up at certain times and you'll be more respectful of him and you'll have better ways of communicating what you want to one another. I'm Dr. Ellen Kenny. You're listening to The Rational Basis of Happiness. And now let's go to the phones and talk with Dale. Dale, are you there? Dr. Kenna, how are you? Good, good. It's what, pleasure to talk to you. Oh, thank you. What's your question? I, I wanted to just ask you something. Um, I went through a very bitter divorce after being divorced for 20 years. And I'm, you know, I'm getting out of my life, and but I still have, like, like when, whenever I have to go over and pick up my daughter at the house or whenever I see him, I just get so very angry because of everything that happened. And I just, I'm trying to get out of my life, and, and I'm doing pretty well in most ways. But, you know, the anger part and the bitter, I would like to let go of it, but I, I just don't know how to do it, you know? Okay. Now, help me understand. You were divorced 20 years ago, or you were recently... I was divorced after 20 years. Yeah, I've been on my own for almost almost two years now. Okay, so you're saying that the anger is lingering in you. It's not like someone whom you never have to have contact with again. This, your Uh, husband... I I, I talk to him and see her on a daily basis. On a daily basis. How old are your your kids? Well, my, my, my boys are are... 30, 33 and 27, but my daughter's 18 and she's coming home from college this week and I got to pick her up. I go pick up my dog and, you know, and I have to deal with him and, oh, you know, I, it just... Tell me what goes through your mind. You're about to see well, well, him. Well, what goes through my mind is this. I mean, you know, I you know, I worked worked my, you know, what off for yeah. 20 years and, you know, I, I'm living in a, a little stinky little apartment and he's living in my $450,000 house and you know, oh. I just didn't have the energy or the money to take him to court, and, I, and my daughter wanted to stay in her home, so I let her. But it just he just sits there smiling like a Cheshire cat, and you know, and all that, and and I, I don't know. I just I just don't I don't know what the what the, what I'm angry about to tell you the truth. Okay, so that would be where you'd want to start. Anger is the emotion. I love my anger. Now that sounds bizarre. I love my anger because it's my way of figuring out what's unfair in my life. Right. I don't stop at the anger. I need to do the introspective work to say, why am I feeling anger towards this person? You know, sometimes I take out like a paper and I'll like write, try to write down, you know, exactly what I'm angry about. And I, after I, you know, I have an angry outburst or whatever, which I hate and I'm not an angry person. But I mean, I, I mean, I want to get past it. Okay, give me two or three things that you're most angry with, apart from the house. He got the house. 
what else, what are the, the key things that just drive you crazy well, about the, the, the settlement? Key things, there's a couple of key things. He has severe OCD, and he was um, a shoplifter. Okay. And um, he was selling me stolen cigarettes for a year. And then when he got a, finally got arrested, I had to go pick up my daughter at the police station because he had my daughter in the, in the car. And, you know, that was the final straw for me. That angers me. Okay. Um, what angers me is, you know, like my daughter's coming home, and, you know, she and he gets to be there when she comes home, and, and he gets to be in the house with the dog and my daughter. And, and I, I get to, you know, I get thrown visitation or whatever, what he throws me, what he what How he come? to him. Okay. Well, well, when you say visitation... She's 18 years old now. Can't she decide who she wants to be with? Right. But see, there's an also another problem is um, he controls all the money. Yeah. And, like, he holds that money over her head like a, like a weapon. So she's afraid if she does, doesn't do what, what her, what his father and, her, and the grandmother say, then, then she's going to get what she does. You know, she, he, he's a very vindictive person. Okay. If you want a solution to this... What I'm hearing is that you want to focus on the positives. Now, that sounds bizarre because this I is, trying to this so, is so, so, so negative. And I would encourage you to get some personal counseling for yourself. Oh, I, to do, help. I, have, a, I have a counselor. Okay, that's wonderful. I, I just wanted to ask you what you, know, what you thought. And I mean, I, I know what the, really what the answer is, but it's only when I have to see him or I have communication with him that these feelings come. Okay, then what you need to do is to prepare for those times. If you're going to see him, if you want to, you have an option. You can either let your mind go on autopilot, what would automatically spill into your mind, which would be all of the negative, unfinished emotions that are unresolvable with him. He's yeah, the know. person he is. He's not made himself into a lovable creature. No. He still continues to do harm with your daughter, using money as a weapon, and she's buying into that too. And you can either fill your mind with those thoughts or you can focus on your daughter. If you prime yourself in advance by making a list of questions that you'd want to ask your daughter, how is school? Is she off at school now? Is that oh, it? Oh, I talk to her daily. It's, uh, it's wonderful. Okay. If you, Once if you, home, it's going to change because her father, you know, Pulver. If you can think of him as the wicked witch melting, he doesn't count anymore. That's my favorite, favorite in the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Pardon? My favorite, favorite movie in the whole wide world. Okay. Just just think I'm melting, I'm melting. Don't pay any attention to him. Focus on your daughter. She's here for a limited time, and this is your life, your values, and you don't yeah. want to spin your, your mind or your wheels around something that's totally futile. He did the damage. He continues to do damage, yeah. and you can't do anything about it because it's too costly. Know. And Know that you're a good person. Know that your yeah, daughter's a, a good decent person. Good person and that he is not a good person. To the extent that he shoplifted, he's a thief. You can oh, call it OCD. I call it a thief. A thief, a cheat, and a liar. Yeah. He then he's on me, you know, believe, believe me. I okay. Know all, but he I will never achieve. Me. Then he's already got his punishment, if that's any solace for you. Because he cannot. Would you want to trade your mind for his mind for one oh, moment? Oh, my, no, no, no. Okay. I, I, I Notice. Live, I couldn't be like that. He lives with his own punishment. Psychologically, he will never have the depth of happiness that you're capable of, even if he uh, everybody, fakes everybody it tells on the you surface. That. Everybody tells you that he'll never be happy. He, like, even if he fakes it on the surface, his self-esteem is he's destroyed it and it doesn't look like he's in, he's motivated to repair it no so i do hope that helps and i really hope that you can focus really on your daughter talking to me i i'm you know I, I feel better i really really do and i mean i try i mean i get out on my life i i'm keep very busy and yeah you know i have a wonderful family and i'm not you know I'm, I'm, keep I'm, your I'm, attention there think of him as the wicked witch that's melting and i wish you the best of luck dale all right, thank you have a oh day. thank you bye-bye bye -bye. and here's an issue that all of us will face sooner or later unfortunately we'll all receive news that someone we love is not going to make it that they have a terminal illness now how do you deliver difficult news some doctors don't even know how to do this themselves. And once you know about it, once you get the bad news, do you just go along with whatever the doctor says, or should you get involved in the decision-making? And should the patient get involved in the decision-making? Later in the show, or actually coming up right after the break, we have Dr. Ed Martin, and we will both discuss how to deliver difficult news and what you can do to make a patient's remaining days as pleasant as possible. I'm Dr. Ellen Kenner, and you're listening to 
The Rational Basis of Happiness. My number that you can jot down to call me anytime you want is toll free 1-877-DR-KENNER. Toll free 1-877-DR Kenner. Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path to Romance, the serious romance guidebook by clinical psychologist Dr. Ellen Kenner. Love is not a causeless gift, but something that has to be earned. You may have heard yourself say, I just want to be loved the way I am. Unfortunately, in quotes, just the way you are, may include qualities that make you less lovable than you could be, or even unlovable. Love is not causeless. It is something you have to earn. But how? The starting point is your moral character. Of course, there are many other factors involved in love, including common values and individual personal preferences. Moral character, however, is the foundation, and it is indispensable. You can download Chapter 1 for free by going to drkenner.com, and you can buy The Selfish Path to Romance at amazon.com.